Hi, I'm Don Cole. Merry Christmas. This week we recognize and remember December the 7th, 1941, the attack on Pearl Harbor. That attack brought the United States into World War II. I want to introduce you to a couple of men who served our nation in that war. Earlier this summer, I video recorded a conversation with Bob Bright and Jack Roach from Cordell, Georgia. These two men served our nation in the Army Air Corps in the European theater of World War II. I got to know Bob and Jack in the daily prayer time at Christ Episcopal Church. They faithfully showed up every single morning to pray for the needs in our community, state, and nation. We should never underestimate the power of these prayers that go to God's throne of grace every morning. This video conversation focuses on Jack Roach, who served as a bombardier in the 15th Air Force. Okay, let's start again with you each telling me your name, and we'll start with Jack. Jack Roach. Bob Bright. Okay, and you're both from Cordell, Georgia. So you all both served in World War II. Yes, right. right. Jack, why don't, uh, why don't we start with you? Uh, because I know you tell everybody your story isn't nearly as exciting <laughs> as Bob's is. Bob doesn't think it's all that exciting. But, uh, so when, when and how did you go about going into service? And which branch did you serve? And what did you do? I served in the Army Air Corps. I, I went in in 1943. 43. And went to Camp Atterbury in, in Indiana. From there, I went to uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, or Biloxi, Mississippi, for basic training. Listed in the Army Air Corps to be a pilot. But after we finished basic training, I, I went to pl flight training. And when I got there, they decided they had too many pilots and, and uh, gave us a, a, an option of Army, uh, uh, infantry, Signal Corps, or uh, or or uh, uh, bombardier navigator training. And it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out I wanted to go to bombardier uh, navigator training. I went, I left there, went for the training. I finished my training in in. August of the same year, went to Foggia, Italy, and that, uh, that's where the, the, you know, the 15th Air Force, that was the base for the 15th Air Force. And uh, I was a replacement on, on a crew that had lost the previous uh, one, one of the navigator bombardiers was killed and, and the other two were rotated because of, of you, had, you rotated after 25 missions. Uh, I s served with, with the, the commanding pilot was uh, uh, Gut Gazelle from, from, from Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, I did Five missions, and we we, and then we had another thing called a sortie, and it took five sorties to make up one mission. And I did fifteen sorties. The sorties were over the Palestine oil fields, and what we would do, we would would uh, flew on B-24s, and we would load, take a full bomb load, and take off and head head for the the oil fields. And it was just a matter of going over and dumping the load, coming back, reloading, and going back over again. And you might do that uh, uh, four or five times in, in a day, and that was considered one sortie. Uh, so when you finished up, Jack, when you finished up your basic training and, and your flight training, um, and you were a bombardier, yeah. and you were down in Italy, now, was Italy your home base from through until you got out? Yes, the, 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 it was in Foggia, Italy, which, which was across the mountains from Naples. 
and on the, on the Adriatic Sea. And the Palesti oil fields were in, in, over in uh, uh, Greece and, and, and over in that area. So was that considered the Pacific Theater or the European Theater? It was the European Theater. The European Theater. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, the Palesti oil fields were just across the Adriatic Sea. It was only about a 10-minute flight okay. from, from the air base of Bojan. And the, the other the mission, the long missions we flew were into, into South Germany. Uh, and uh, we, the longest mission we flew was, was to, to the, to the uh, 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 Schweinfurt, Germany, where the, the ball, uh, ball bearing factory. And uh, we, it was a combined mission with the 8th Air Force. We, the, the majority of the 15th was B-24s, and the B-24 actually had about uh, almost twice as much bomb load as B B-17. It was a later, later plane. And uh, we, we ran out of fighter cover when we crossed the German border, and we were without, without cover from uh, then till we hit our target and come, coming back. Uh, and the, and the rest of the missions were in South Germany, Austria, and that area. So you were just very blessed that you didn't get you didn't get hit because you didn't have anybody protecting you. It it was it was brutal. The the the, the uh, flak was it, you, when, when you when you flew a bomb mission when you hit your IP, IP point. You you the, you kicked on the bomb site, and and it actually took over the flying of the plane, and it, it you had no control. The pilot had no control. The the the, the, the bomb site took you right onto the target when you when you dropped your bombs, uh, you cut off the bomb site, and the pilot, pilot took back over the flight the, the plane. And you just prayed a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and we saw the probably the early use of, of, of jet propelled planes. The Germans came up with one, and it actually was not very effective because they were so fast and we were so slow that they they would be past us before the and and, and their accuracy was very poor because of the. the short time on the target. Uh, but, uh, they, you weren't used to making such a big lead, and shooting for such a big lead, because they had been flying propeller before, and now that something's moving so fast, yeah. your regular lead, you're past it. Yeah, and, and of course our, our, our waste gunners and gunners, they, had, they couldn't follow it either, so it was... It, uh, yeah. uh, but, the Messerschmitts and the others were very effective against us. Um, and you were a bombardier, and so it locked in the target. When you locked in the target, you were basically on a uh, you were basically on a manned missile. Then, right. You didn't have any control at all until we, you unlocked it. We would uh, about ten minutes before we got to our our IP point. We would uh, 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 the the bombs were were, were not triggered, and we, we would we would uh, the the crew would go into the bomb bay with under my supervision and arm the bombs, and, and we'd get them armed about the same time that we hit the IP point. Yeah. And so. Uh, wow. And if 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 one of those bombs got stuck in the in in the bomb bay after they were armed, we had a problem. Uh, Did you have to send somebody back there? Somebody had to go back there and kick that sucker and get him loose and get it loose and get it out of there. <laughs> Anything else that you want to, that, that comes to your mind that you want to say about uh, your time in the service? Or Oh, well, Jack, you went on the Freedom Flight. I did. I did. And it's, if it, any veteran that doesn't go on that is, is missing a, a wonderful it. opportunity. It's not. Of course, I lived in Washington, as bad as I did. 
back and forth in the military, so I'm pretty familiar with watching it. Yeah. There was only one thing that, that I remember vividly, and that is when we were on our way home, uh, we went through, we, the convoy went through Munich, and you could still smell the dead bodies that were buried in the rubble. And, and it, I probably lived, if I lived to be 110, I'll never forget that. Yeah. It, was, it was so vivid. The, the first thing they did to us, we got, flew back to uh, La Havre, which is on the coast of France. We stripped off everything we had and dumped all our clothes in a big furnace thing they had. That, that way nobody get close to you. Burned everything. Then you went to the quarterhouse and got all new clothes. <laughs> uh-huh. I think you told me they fed you milkshakes for a long time. They had 50 gallon drums with the eggnog. Eggnog. Yeah. eggnog. I don't think they had much nog in it, but they had a lot of <laughs> Mostly eggs. <Okay. laughs> a lot of nog. Back when you, after you got out, what, uh, did you go back to see anybody or connect up with any of the old? I uh, stayed in touch with one of the, uh, one of the crew members, a fellow named Hap Harn, for a while. He, he was, he was up, lived up in, in Boston. Hap Harn? Hap Harn is his name. And, that, and we stayed in touch for probably several years, but it, that's the only one. Do you all have any reunions or anything like that with your old? We used to, we don't have any more, all dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you been to the, to the 8th uh, Museum in Savannah? Yeah, that's, uh, we, that's quite we have put that together, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a nice, good job they did on the um, Okay, how old are you all now? I'll be 95 July 2nd, and Bob was 96 in yeah. April 1st. July 2nd, that's right around the corner. Not bad, not a couple of days. I might, I might. I, I was born in 25, you were born in 20. In 26. Six, yeah. yeah. Well, um, what do y'all do now? I'm retired from McKesson Drug Company. Bob's a retired banker. <laughs> oh, well, what, what do you do every day now for your, just for your activity yeah. every day? I do just what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you come over here yeah. every day. Yeah, we, we do morning prayer five days a week. And uh, I play golf two days a week. I used to play golf. Uh, I don't do much of anything except take a little exercise. I, I volunteer at the hospital on Friday mornings. So still serving. <laughs> it's best to, well, my wife volunteered at the hospital for 25 years before she died. Uh -huh. And I, I figured I could take over where she, when she, where she left off. And yeah. So I've been over there about five years now. How long have you all been uh, attending here at Christ Episcopal? I moved up here in, in uh, 1968. And uh, we were Lutheran before we moved here, and then we we, uh, we were Baptists, and uh, I guess Ben and I came here in about 19. It's been about 60 years. Was, yeah. Uh, we, we moved up here from Orlando, and our pastor, our Lutheran pastor, when we moved up here, told us, he said, now, you need to find it. So there's no Lutheran church in, in Cordillo. The closest one at, at back that time was Albany and, and Americas. And we had five children. He, he, he told us, with five children, you need to find a church that's local. And he yeah. recommended we visit the Presbyterian, Methodist, and, and Episcopal Church. Well, well, I sure appreciate y'all taking the time. Uh, oh. I'm, uh... Thank you, Jack, for your service. Then and your continued service through the years. Thank you for watching this conversation with Jack Roach. I will have a conversation coming up soon with Bob Bright. You don't want to miss his story. In this Christmas season, I pray for God's blessings on you and your family.
I'm Don Cole. Merry Christmas.